visualbroccoli.com. In this session, we're going to talk about basic drawing within PowerPoint. Now, I'm just going to introduce you to some of the techniques that you can do within PowerPoint and get you started drawing. But I want to point out, you can do a lot with the drawing tools within PowerPoint. What I'm kind of referring to, a lot of times people are most comfortable with or most familiar with shapes, basic shapes within the PowerPoint, uh, PowerPoint itself. And for example, let's say I want to highlight a, a certain portion of the heart here. So I can bring in a shape, like an oval, and kind of highlight this, maybe bring some text in. And this really doesn't stand out. It's not that dynamic, but it certainly works. But I wanted something that looks more customized, something that looks a little more professional. So what I did using uh, just the basic shape tools within PowerPoint and able to manipulate it, I did something like this. So I can show different areas of the heart. So that looks pretty cool. Much better than this. So you get the idea. And it only took me just, you know, a, a minute or so for each of those shapes. Now, to show you how advanced you can get with this, this heart was created 100% within PowerPoint using the drawing tools, specifically the freeform tool, within PowerPoint. So you really can do a lot of advanced stuff. But, uh, and just to kind of show you this, and this is something I'm going to cover in, a, in another tutorial, more advanced drawing, this pencil was created 100% using basic shapes within PowerPoint, and then I was able to manipulate it. So, so part of it's free transform, some of it's just creating, you know, using the uh, rectangular tool and then manipulating these tools to get it to work and then working with gradients and transparencies to kind of give it this final look. And the beauty of this pencil is you can actually export this as an image just by right clicking on it and you can use it in PowerPoint or the PowerPoint presentations or Word or whatever you want to do. So you have a lot of flexibility. So what we're going to do here though in this lesson is get you started. We're going to go ahead and just trace the outline of an EKG. That's going to get us introduced to some of the Bezier curves and some of the functionalities that we need to learn within PowerPoint. So without further ado, let's jump in and get you introduced to the drawing tools. And as always, you can always download what you see here at the PowerPoint presentation and all the assets right from visualbroccoli.com. So to get us started, we're going to go ahead and just do some really, you know, kind of basic introduction to some of the things we can do with shapes. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just go to a blank slide here. And if you click on shapes and click on a circle or an oval, I guess is the proper term. If I come in here and just freehand this circle, you notice how it gets distorted. And that may be desirable. But if I want to keep this circle perfectly constrained, if I hit the shift key, now watch what happens when I hit the shift key it perfectly constrains that circle. And if I just hold down the shift key as I be a square or whatever, it's going to be keep it perfectly constrained. Okay. Now, that being said, let's show you some basic ways we can manipulate this circle. So if I right click on this, I'm going to go ahead and edit points. And you'll notice now I have four points because this is a circle and I can go ahead and move these points to anywhere I want. Okay, so let's just bring this down just a little bit here. And that's looking good. And I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these handles. Now, the best way to describe these handles is actually called Bezier curves. And these are Bezier handles. If I move the handle, you notice how the line follows the handle. Let me just do a control Z to undo that. Uh, but it's doing it both sides. If I add a modifier key like the Alt key or in the Mac, it's going to be the Windows key. And if I just bring this up, it just brings up this one side. So I want to bring this little hump up. Let's make a heart, if you will, and kind of bring this here. And I'm just going to bring this down just a little bit. So now we got the makings of a heart. And I'm just going to go ahead and just adjust this a little bit. So if you, you notice how I bring the handle here or this way, it manipulates it. If I add the modifier key, it just adds the top part. So I want to bring that out just a little bit. Now, if I click down here in the bottom, to kind of help complete the heart look, and this is just real kind of crude, but I'm just going to go ahead and just bring these in. You notice how it brings the bottom more to a, a kind of a, a point. And that's kind of the basics. If I click on this again, right click, edit points, I can go ahead and add points if I need to do that. The same applies, I can go ahead and delete a point. If I wanted to, I can actually just sit here and hold down the control key or the command key in the Mac, double click, and it'll add a point. And if I click it again, it'll take it away. So click once, adds a point, double click, it takes away a point. So just some options there. 
Okay, you kind of got the basics. Let's go ahead and draw this EKG. And we'll go ahead and get rid of the circle or the line we already have in here. And to get started, I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in just a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to grab a sh uh, go to the shapes, and I'm going to go ahead and use the freeform tool. Now I'm going to start clicking here. And now we, all of a sudden you're kind of seeing I'm clicking, but nothing's happening. Well, actually it is. If I come down here, you'll see this line. And the problem is the line is very difficult to see with the black background. So I'm going to hit enter to apply it. And that's not going to work for us. So what I'm going to do here is bring in a shape. We're going to change the default color. And the way to change the default color for a shape is we need to apply it. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in a circle. Right click on this. And I'm going to go ahead format shape. And I'm going to do kind of my preference with this is I'm going to change the color fill to none, no fill. I'm going to change the line color to something that's really going to contrast nicely with the black background. And I can always change it later on. And I want to just thicken this up to about four points. I can just certainly do it this way or just type in four points. That looks good. Hit close. Now to apply this or assign this color to the default colors to shapes, I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to go ahead down here and look for set as default shape. It should be set color default shape, but it's actually as default shape. So go ahead and click that. And now when I add a shape, it uses those attributes. Okay, now we're ready to go. So let's go to shapes, freeform. Now this is going to go fairly quickly. I'm going to come in here, click. And don't worry if you're off just a little bit. We can always add points and move points. I'm going to click right before. I'm adding straight lines here right at the moment. So I'm just going to click here right before the, uh, the curve and go straight across. And I'm clicking, by the way, to set key points or points that I can manipulate later on. The points of what we're going to, those basically kind of our uh, focal points or fulcrums allow us to, to make our curves and to go a different direction. Same thing here. I'm going to click right before the top. Go to the end, here, here. Now I'm going to click right before the U wave and right after the U wave and go all the way at the end. Now, this is still attached. So what I want to do now is I'm just going to hit enter and we're good. Now, some of it's off a little bit, but that's okay. We can go ahead and now fine tune this. So let's go ahead and right click and some of you have to do it twice. Edit points and I'm going to zoom in. I want to zoom in a little closer now. And let's go over here. And again, I'm using the zoom tool down here in the bottom, or you can use the control key and your wheel on your mouse to zoom in as well. Okay, so I'm going to click here, and now you see the little bezier handle. I'm going to go ahead and bring that up. And you notice, if you do it on one side, you really should do it on the other side to keep things equal. Because again, if it's, this comes down like this, like a magnet, this line is going to follow this handle. So I'm just going to kind of make sure this is in line. And I'm going to go ahead and add just a slight curve here. And if I unclick like I did there, I need to, need to select it again. And make sure you don't select the background. It's very easy to do to select the background image. There we go. And I'm just going to bring this down just a hair. And that's looking good. I'm going to go ahead and just add us a slight curve to this. All right. And we're going to click here, bring this up. And we're going to, again, take the other side to match it. If you need to, you can just bring the arrow, the handles in just a little bit. There we go. That'll help. There we go. And I want to bring this down because it's not quite lining it up. And if I need to, I can move this, these points. Looks good. Come up. come up and I'm going to go ahead and just drop this down just a little bit. All right. If we zoom out, I'm going to just drop this and there we have it. So go ahead and play with that a little bit and see what you think. We can add a drop shadow, whatever. In the next lesson in part two, I'll show you how I actually completed the look and show you some other things I did with the shape tools and groupings to really create a unique look. Well, go ahead and play with this. Download what you see here. You can download it, play with it, manipulate it in any way you want. And the nice thing about this, I just want to show you one other thing here, is once I created this, 
I was able then, I just duplicated this slide, and then I was able to manipulate that image, this very exact same image, to actually show ST elevation. So I used this image to create this image, and then I just changed some of the text. So once you create one image, a lot of times you can reuse it just by using some of the tools and features I showed you here in this lesson. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and as I said, there's a lot of things you can learn and how you can use shapes and manipulate these shapes to really help you meet your needs. Well, until the next time, I hope you find unique ways to make your presentations more editable for your audience.